Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Riot made a ton of changes to objective monsters in the new season, but one of the biggest changes they made was actually the addition of a brand new objective monster, in this case, the Void Grubs. As they're brand new, I feel like there are a lot of implications that Void Grubs bring to the table, and I feel like a lot of players aren't considering exactly what it is that Void Grubs are doing for them, when they should be taken, what benefits you're actually getting from them, and as a result, I wanted to make a video today discussing Void Grubs and how you guys can make better use of them in your own games. First, I want to talk about when to take Void Grubs. Um, as with all objective monsters, there's an opportunity cost to taking Void Grubs that I don't feel many players are aware of. A jungler's time, in particular, is extremely important. Any moment you spend taking an epic monster is time you could have spent farming or ganking or applying pressure to lanes or basing, you know, whatever else. Um, and this does also apply to laners as well. If you're spending a ton of time out in lane, for example, if you're a top laner, you roam mid to try and gank, you spend, you know, 15 seconds standing in the side brush waiting for the mid laner to push up, you finally show, they walk away, you're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm not getting anything there. Then you walk back top side, you kill the crab, then you're finally back in lane. Well, by that point, the enemy top laner, if they're smart, has already shoved you in under tower. You're already missing minions to the tower. Um, and as a result, time is money in League of Legends. You can't just spend time doing something because, well, you did it, didn't you? Because there is a cost that's being paid elsewhere. As an example of mine, a buddy of mine used to take Drake at like level 4 as Vi all the time, which is doable, but he'd spend upwards of a full minute doing nothing but kill the Drake, and while this obviously got us a Drake, uh, depending on what kind of Drake it was, it may not have been worth it, because the amount of gold and XP he could have gained from just farming for that duration is vastly superior, and sometimes Drake buff is just not worth that amount of time. Now, the advantage of Drake is that it is giving you permanent stats, and that those stats are relevant essentially at all points of the game, because they apply to both PvP and PvE interactions. For example, just having the Adaptive Force from an Infernal Drake is generally good whether you're hitting towers or whether you're hitting champions. Kind of doesn't matter. By comparison, Void Grub buff is very specific. Void Grubs only work against structures. And now you might be asking yourself, well, hell might, that doesn't make any sense. In order to win a game of League of Legends, you minimally have to kill like four or like seven structures to actually be able to win a game. Therefore, you will always get value from Void Grub buff. And while this is true, uh, in circumstances where you're able to hit the tower uncontested, I argue that the small amount of extra true damage over time that you get from the Void Grub buff isn't particularly helpful, right? Like, if I'm top lane as Yorick, and I've pushed into the enemy uh, top lane inner tower, and I know they're all bot lane, uh, the Void Grub buff doesn't matter here. Because I'm killing this tower no matter what, right? Extra true damage, no extra true damage, I'm just killing this tower. There are some circumstances in which that little bit of extra chip damage is going to matter uh, if you're able to uh, take a tower uncontested, but generally I would argue it's not that relevant all the time. However, in circumstances where you're only able to chip at the tower, for example, you can only walk up and hit it once or twice before being forced off by defenders because they're still there and you can't really just like stand in range to hit it, that is where the Void Grub buff becomes much more relevant. It's also much more relevant in circumstances where plates are still up on towers, not only as a means by which you can take additional plates because it's a little bit of extra turret damage, but also because plates give towers bonus resistances and true damage obviously ignores resistances. This means then that the Void Grub buff, in my opinion, is mostly useful in lane as a means to help secure tower plates or first tower. And as a result of this, if your team is unable to take advantage of the buff during this time period, the buff itself is not particularly useful. If you're playing a scaling comp, for example, with a Kale Top, a Kog'Maw bot, and a Master Yi jungle, uh, Void Grub buff isn't likely to be useful because your team is scaling. They're going to likely be under their own towers for most of the laning phase, just picking up farm and trying to scale later in the game. The Master Yi player probably doesn't really want to do Void Grubs and try to gank to force uh, circumstances where your team can hit tower. He just wants to, like, AFK clear his jungle to make sure he gets as strong as possible, and as a result, the amount of value you're likely to get for spending time on Void Grubs is not actually worth it in this team composition, because you're going to spend, sort of minimally, 30 seconds to a full minute killing all of the Void Grubs, and in that time, you could have been doing camps, you could have been recalling, right? Like, the cost-benefit is not there for taking Void Grubs in this scenario. Now, conversely, if you're playing an early game team composition where you have Renekton and Caitlyn Lux bot lane, 
and you know Lee Sin, who wants to be ganking super early and super often, then Void Grubs are worth it to you, because your team is going to be under the opponent's tower all the time, you are aiming for an early game advantage, which means breaking plates for the bonus gold and taking first tower in order to get, again, that bonus gold and break open the game as fast as possible, and as a result, Void Grubs are very worth it for you in that circumstance. So this is something to consider in your games. Naturally, if Void Grubs are completely uncontested and you can take them quickly, let's say the enemy jungler you know is dead, the mid laner is recalling, and like you can do this super fast, because you're well jungle and you're going to break the void grub shields then like yeah you may as well it's going to take you less than 30 seconds to kill them and it's free value for your team right if you have no other camps up it's free value there's no trade-off here um but it's something to consider because i don't think void grubs are an every game objective i really don't and even the pros for the most part just kind of ignore void grubs for a long portion of the game just because they're available doesn't mean they need to be taken this is also true because Void Grubs are the most contestable objective in the game. Uh, for one reason, there are six of them, mo three at a time. Most other objectives are coin flips by comparison. If you deal 90% of Baron Nasher's HP, but the enemy jungler smites it, you get none of the value instead of 90% of the value, right? Like the enemy team gets 100% of the value, you get zero. There is no other way around it, right? If you secure Baron, you get the whole value, the enemy team gets none of it. Void Grubs, though, are split between three individual monsters, meaning that killing one or two of them still gives you the benefits even if you don't take the third one or have the third one stolen out from under you. This also means that when and where you smite is super important. You can only smite one or two if you have both charges available and the fight goes long, which means that an enemy jungler can more easily steal a grub and meaning that enemy laners can more easily steal a grub. After all, you can only smite one of them and if you've already smote one and an enemy laner shows up, well, you don't have smite available to actually guarantee a secure. This then means that Void Grubs are highly contestable. If the enemy team is doing Grubs, you can easily show up to contest, even if you don't have Smite, because, again, they can only Smite one of them. And this also means that Void Grubs don't have to be taken all at once. You can grab one or two each time you pass them and incrementally grant your team benefits. Um, this then means that you don't have to commit a ton of time to killing them. If you take the first one and then realize the enemy team is collapsing, you can easily leave and wait for Void Grubs to regen all their HP, forcing them to minimally start the camps when they're at full health, as opposed to when they've all taken some damage. And as a result, they're all are things you can do to make it a little bit easier on yourself, uh, but certainly it means that if you know the enemy team is doing Void Grubs, show up, because even if you can't get there to stop them from taking the first one, you can maybe contest the second and third ones, and therefore you can get some of the value back for your team. Additionally, you do really want to make sure that you are contesting these. Um, again, the benefits are sort of iffy in my opinion, but the five or six uh, Void Grub buff stack is quite powerful, and as a result, you really want to make sure the enemy team isn't getting there. Um, this means if you steal one Void Grub out of each batch that you're totally fine, or that if you just secure two of them early in the game and then leave, uh, the enemy team can't possibly get the full five or six stack buff, and as a result, you can give your team an advantage in that scenario. This also goes for laners as well. I feel like a lot of laners sort of treat uh, all epic monsters as, like, the jungler has to be here, but you absolutely can, like, get Pryo as a top laner, walk down into the river, kill a singular Void Grub, then the other two get their shields, but that's fine, and then you walk away, you go back to lane, you catch the wave under your own tower, you're totally good. You have given your team an incremental advantage, but something that didn't require you to spend a ton of time and guarantee that you had smite. If the enemy jungler does show up, you just leave, right? Like, you don't have to actually finish the buff, and if you stick around and contest a little bit longer, yeah, they might get the one that you were wailing on, but they're not going to get the other two because, again... They would have to smite it, and they already used smite to steal it from the first one. In summation, therefore, Void Grubs are not an auto-take. You should always be considering if your team will benefit from the buff, and how much time you're likely to invest in gaining the buff before you do so. Void Grubs are highly contestable. Make sure you're off-vision if, you if you do plan to take them, and you can always contest the enemy team if they're doing them, even if you don't have smite. Third, taking one or two Void Grubs before retreating is a legitimate strategy because they have individual respawn timers. Anyways, I hope this was useful for you guys in your own games. Let me know any strats you have dealing with the Void Grubs or if you disagree with any of the advice I've given down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and leave it a like. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.